Hello there, this is Matt from JetBrains, and today I want to show you the AWS Toolkit for Rider. This is a free, open source plugin for Rider that will help you create, debug, and deploy AWS serverless applications in C Sharp. Installing the plugin is easy. Go to the Marketplace tab on the Plugin Settings page and search for AWS. Click Install and restart the IDE. Before you can build anything, you also need to make sure that several external dependencies are also installed. Firstly, you need the AWS and SAM command line tools from the AWS website. The plugin uses these to configure your AWS resources. Secondly, you also need to install a target.NET Core runtime, either 2.0 or 2.1. Finally, Docker. The AWS toolkit will download and create a container so that you can run and debug your AWS Lambda handlers locally. To help get you started with Lambdas, the AWS Toolkit provides the standard AWS Lambda project template directly integrated into Rider's new project dialog. This template will create a simple Hello World project that you can use as a sample or as a building block for creating your own projects. There are a couple of things worth noting in the generated solution. Firstly, you get a test project, which is a nice example of how you can test your Lambda code, and Rider supports running and debugging the tests directly from the editor. Also, if you check out the Solution Items folder, you'll see a number of useful files, specifically the template.yaml file. This is the cloud formation configuration file that can be used to deploy the Lambda, and Rider will add an icon in the editor to easily run and debug a Lambda resource. But before you can run, debug, or deploy, you need to choose the credentials and AWS region you'll be targeting. You can use the handy status bar widget to select a region and credentials that have already been added with the AWS CLI tools or you can quickly edit the credentials files to add tokens manually. If you run from the icon in the template.yaml file, the plugin will create a run configuration for you based on the template with the current Lambda resource already selected. Of course, you can add these details manually too, and Rider will helpfully complete the handler name. The next step is to specify the input to the Lambda. A Lambda is triggered by an event, and the format of the JSON payload depends on the type of event expected. You can enter this input as text based on a library of templates, or you can use the events.json file that the project template created for you. Running this configuration will run the application locally. The plugin will use the AWS tooling to build the application and then create a Docker image that will host the Lambda. You can see the output of the application in the run window. You can also debug your application too. Simply set a breakpoint and hit debug. The application is run locally inside the container and debugging works as expected. The AWS Toolkit can help with deploying your Lambda too. The easiest way is to right click on the template.yaml file and select Deploy Serverless Application. Here you can deploy to a new or existing cloud formation stack and select and even create the S3 bucket used to hold the deployment artifacts. Once complete, you can use the AWS Explorer to view your CloudFormation stacks and deployed Lambdas. The right-click menu allows you to run the remote Lambda and update the configuration, redeploy after editing, or even delete it. And if you don't have a template.yaml file, you can right-click on the Lambda node in AWS Explorer and enter the details manually. Cloud debugging is a new feature for AWS that allows you to use Rider to debug a .NET application running as a container in ECS. To get started, right-click on your service in the AWS Explorer and select Enable Cloud Debugging. You will then be asked to select a role that AWS will use to set up cloud debugging. Make sure to check the AWS documentation to see how to correctly configure this role. Before making any changes, the AWS Toolkit will show you a warning that cloud debugging should not be used to debug a production service, as the process will stop and reconfigure your ECS resources. Instead, cloud debugging is intended to allow you to debug your application in a production-like environment, with access to AWS resources that can be hard to replicate when running locally. The AWS Toolkit will now start configuring your service for cloud debugging. This only needs to be done once and will take a couple of minutes. Once complete, you'll see a new service listed in the AWS Explorer marked with a debug icon. This is a clone of your existing service reconfigured to support debugging. And note that the original service is stopped. 
Right-click this new service and select Debug to create a new run configuration. The cluster and service names are pre-selected, but you still need to add artifact and port mappings, as well as a start command. What you enter here depends on the application you're trying to debug. The artifacts path should map the build output of your project to the remote application path. This means that the remote application will be overwritten and kept up to date with the current build output of the local project. The application I'm using here is a simple .NET Core console app, so the start command will be a call to .NET and the path to the build output on the remote machine. Alternatively, if your application is deployed from a Docker file, Rider can read it and automatically import the mappings and start command. Finally, you might want to add a before launch step to make sure the local project is built before you start debugging. When you do start debugging, the AWS toolkit will incrementally synchronize the folders from the artifact path mappings, making sure that your remote application folder is up to date with the local project. The very first time you start debugging a newly configured debug service, the AWS toolkit will also upload Rider's remote debugging toolset. This will take a few minutes, but only happens once. Subsequent launches will skip this step. Once the files have finished uploading, the debugger connects to the remote service, and you're now debugging your application hosted in the cloud. All the usual debugger features work as expected, such as breakpoints, step in and out, inspecting and changing values, and so on. If you make changes to your application, simply rebuild and start debugging again. The AWS toolkit will make sure the remote application folder is up to date and connect the debugger. Once you've finished debugging your application, you can right click on the debug service and select Disable Cloud Debugging. AWS will clean up the changes, delete the debug service, and restart the production service. But remember that the changes made to your service during debugging have just been discarded. If you need to, commit your code and redeploy your production service as normal. So in this video, we've seen how the AWS Toolkit can help with credential and region management, creating, debugging and deploying AWS Lambdas, and cloud debugging of .NET applications on ECS. If you're interested in more details, please check out the AWS documentation and download the AWS Toolkit and take it for a spin. Thanks for watching.